Chapter 11 Stay here, I ordered Kira fifteen minutes later, while molding my starball into its favorite shape, a long, slender sword hanging at my hip, where it would be easily accessible. Don't go out, don't open the door, and don't let anybody in. As I spoke, I kicked off my P.E. teacher shoes, donning high leather boots instead. Off went the fitted gym pants, on went the knife-resistant leather. A school-themed hoodie electrified my hair as it slid off my slender frame. Then I drew my favorite shiny black jacket back up around my shoulders like a shield. Go over the next chapter in your math book, I continued. Just because you're suspended doesn't mean you can afford falling behind. Where are you going? Kira spoke as she shifted, a shimmer of light and air turning fox into girl with the effortlessness of magic. She hadn't bothered leaping down from the lintel before transforming, so she ended up chinning herself onto the floor, landing as silently as she would have in her animal form. Unfortunately, my sibling was even more inquisitive on two feet than she had been on four, and no more interested in schoolwork either. Tonight's not an arena night, Kira pointed out, patting in a circle around me as she completely ignored all preceding instructions. Her agile fingers twitched my hair out from under the collar of my jacket and straightened my sword in its sheath, even as her equally clever tongue pinned me down verbally, as only a little sister could. Where else can we get enough money to satisfy Simon? I wasn't in the habit of lying to my sister, so I told her the cold, hard truth. From werewolves, I answered eyes closing as I made a decision I knew in my heart would lead to yet more trouble. But I couldn't lose Kira to the foster care system, and Gunner possessed both the funds and the ability to make my upcoming employment appear legitimate enough to satisfy even our dour social workers' unattainable standards. I'd just have to keep a tight rein on my abilities until Gunner left town. Easy enough. As if she was reading my mind, my sister raised herself on tiptoe until she could look me in the eye. Then she parroted back words I'd tossed in her direction far too often over the years. Foxes and wolves don't mix. You can't let them know what we are. My chest expanded with pride as I gazed upon a young woman growing into wisdom by the moment. I won't, I started. But Kira wasn't done with her efforts to rule the roost. You need backup. I'm coming with you, she decided, dropping butt to linoleum by the door while yanking on recently discarded tennis shoes. The math textbook beside her was nudged subtly aside as she dressed, a sprawl of notebooks turning dog-eared and rumpled as she used them to pry dirt out from between her cleats. I can be a distraction. She sure could. Right now, for instance, I was distracted with worry that Dad might think my sister was better off in a wealthier household than the one I was able to pay for, or in a family where textbooks weren't used as doorstops. After all, our father had believed in education just as firmly as he believed in kinship. What would he think if I was forced to yank Kira out of the academy just because I couldn't come up with enough cash to pay the bill? No, you're not coming with me. I countered, squashing second thoughts, even as I pulled up Gunner's address on my cell phone. The closest bus stop was a mile from the Alpha's office, and I'd have to make two changes to even get that far. Math is an essential life skill, I muttered, both to myself and to my sister. For example, math told me I couldn't afford a taxi, which meant I'd take the bus for the first leg, then walk the rest. I should have realized that Kira's mercurial nature was shifting from helpful to fretful, but I was too busy plotting out my plan of attack to notice the symptoms. Now, though, the leggy tween eased between my phone and my face, forcing me to pay attention to her expression, and I winced as I caught the red flush of anger brightening her cheeks. Kira, I started. I'm not a child, my sister countered. I deserve to be involved. I deserve to know what I am. We're foxes. Kira didn't even wait for me to finish that particular sentence. Instead, she pressed closer into my personal space, standing on tiptoes, not so much in solidarity this time around, as in an attempt to intimidate. We're fox shifters, she corrected, 
as if she was the adult and I was the child. But what does that even mean? Why do the werewolves hate us if we're just like them, except with red fur and better style? It doesn't make any sense. She was right, unfortunately. But Mama had been my only link to knowledge about our heritage, and our mother was long gone. Or was she? Absurdly, I waited ten long seconds for a voice in my head to illuminate the darkness. And during that delay, my sister's stewing erupted into outright rage. If you don't want to tell me, she started. I don't know, okay? I snapped back, ashamed of myself even as I lost my temper. Do you think turning into a parent at age 18 came with a handbook? It didn't. I'm doing the best I can, and you're not helping matters. Now do your homework, then go to bed. And predictably, Kira lashed right back with her own fox fury. I hate you, my usually sunny sister emoted, family cohesiveness and math textbooks forgotten in the face of my badly chosen honesty. Then the girl fled to her bedroom without another word and slammed the door behind her back.